Pond people, John G. Modern Design back again with the water feature design series. This is video number nine. This is about wetland filter installation. If you want to follow this series on wetlands, this is the third video. I'll send you a link to the first video. That video is gonna tell you what a wetland is made out of, why it's awesome for your pond. The second video, that link is up there, is the beginning of this one. I did the layout of the wetland filter all the way through the middle of the project. This video is from the middle of the project to the end of the project. Now you know what's coming your way. Stay tuned, do me a favor, give it one of these if you like it. And if you have any questions about this process the whole way through, or there's something that I didn't cover because I always forget something, hit it in the comment section. I'll answer you later. What we deal with on a regular basis here in East Tennessee is that rock is available and then rock is not available. And then rock is available and then it's not available. It comes and goes so fast. And we have to kind of settle for a lot of times on the rock that we're getting. So ideally I would have liked my first layers to be all this size stone and we couldn't get it. All we could get is the mix. So we dumped all the mix in here. But uh, what's happening here is I went back over the weekend. I brought back an amazing cedar log and I got another load of rock, which was much more big stuff. So I'm going to shuttle that in here first and then I'm going to push all the smaller stone on top. We were able to get the three quarter to inch and inch and a half gravel. So as you can see, this is our cutout for our aqua blocks. This is where the aggregate goes to. The reason for my overcut now starts to make sense. So we'll do the bigger stone. We'll push this stone in. We'll get it level. We'll put our layer of three quarter to inch and a half on top. Hopefully that'll just push out a little bit. Then we have this shelf all the way around. We can create our curvatures, make our artistic effects. The edge detail is super important because this is a large area on a water feature. You want it to look good. So make sure you leave yourself enough space. I see a lot of guys, they do this straight up the side. They stack over their blocks with boulders or rocks. They cover up a lot of their filter area. This entire area needs to be able to perk up so that you're getting maximum benefits from the wetland filtration. It's all about surface area and beneficial bacteria. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to push the bigger rocks in, then we're going to slide these in. We're going to throw the three quarter inch and a half in. We're going to start swinging boulders today. Remember where our benchmark is over here. We're just going to make sure that we get our boulders up high enough that it's as high as that ground level. Because if you recall, we got six inches of freeboard. That's six inches of, of protection all the way around of liner. So as long as I can shoot grade on my liner and make sure that my liner comes all the way up to our finished ground level, we are plenty good. Then we're going to have to do our elevations on our cut where our spillway goes down into the existing waterfall, make the connection there. I'm going to also teach you about how we put a breather on our pipe because you know this pipe pumps straight into the bottom of the wetland and the water flows up and what you don't ever want is a suction that pulls all the junk out of the bottom back down into your koi pond. I'm going to show you guys later on how to make sure that doesn't happen. You guys follow the time lapse and watch us get the rest of this put together. I'll check back in with you later. So there's a couple of noteworthy things that I want to cover while you're watching my team work in high speed. First is you can see that we separate out all the larger river stones to put in the bottom. Normally we would hope that we could purchase separate sizes and not have to go through this madness. The second thing is you'll notice we use all round aggregate in our wetland. And you're going to ask yourself at some point, you're going to find angular stone that's going to be cheaper and you're going to say, can I use the angular rock? The answer is no, you definitely should not use angular rock. It doesn't work as well. It locks tightly together. The spaces between the stones are smaller and it's really, really hard to try to back flush and clean a wetland filter built out of angular rock. So make sure you avoid that at all costs. All right, crew, check out what Tristan's up to. He's pulling up the underlayment, making sure that there's always an underlayment barrier between the soil and our liner. This protects it from sharp objects and insect damage. He's also 
pulling rocks and gravel out from under on the flat surfaces so that the boulders don't puncture holes when we set them. So you guys are going to have a hard time seeing this because Jake's got his butt in my way the whole time. But the two inch line that's running in, Tristan's putting a T in right now and he's running that line around the outside so that we can show you the bleeder valve later. Alright so you guys see the team now starting to do their backfilling. Let's talk a little bit about how meticulous we are about backfilling and why. They use nice clean dirt not cramming a bunch of sharp rocks in behind their liner. They fold up super tight and they compact as they go. What we want to make sure is that we don't leave habitats for anything that burrows. You see Tristan packing rocks underneath that log, making sure everything's tight, but we don't want to create habitat for anything. Not for bugs, not for squirrels, not for chipmunks. We've had stuff chew through our liner, we've had problems with fire ants, we've had problems with termites, we've had problems with carpenter ants, and usually it's always because of something we didn't do. And whenever I've had problems in EPDM liner in the past, it's because of either a poor job of doing backfilling, a poor job of protecting the liner with stones, or not using underlayment. So do the job, do it right, do it clean, fold your edges. That's all I gotta say, man. How you do anything is how you do everything. That's what my buddy Derek says and how right he is, the devil's in the details. So as we start on the second level of the retaining wall, pay attention to our excavation. You'll notice how natural our stonework looks. It's because we take the time to hide the bottom of the rocks. We always excavate a little bit below one rock so that the next rock tucks in behind it. Look how we set and pry and adjust each and every stone till it just fits perfectly. That's how you create a natural look. The next thing you do is don't give up on your backfill. Do a quality job on the backfill. Use your liner as high as you can. Wad up extra pieces of underlayment and use them in between the stones instead of throwing them in the trash can. It will allow water to seep through the wall without taking soil with it. It helps keep your water feature clean in the long run. So you can see the team starting to work on the spillway shelf right now, always set with a laser. Look at the chart. Our spillway is nine inches below our benchmark. It's easy to see. Measure it with the laser. The guys take the time to make a nice clean shelf. They compact it. They smooth it out. Your efficiency here is everything. Get it right. Get it done. And it's a nice overlap into the streamliner. We have so much extra streamliner coming up and a nice drop off. They don't even need to make a seam. I love it when a plan comes together.
And I want to show you this whip down here at the bottom. And this is what we put in so that when the power goes out, this thing doesn't back siphon all the junk down into the pond below. That main line feeds into the bottom, right? And then the water level rises up through there. This little whip right here, this guy is teed in and he's up close to the surface. So there's a little bit of water blowing out of that thing. What happens is when the power goes out, as this thing back siphons, it siphons right down. And as soon as that whip hits the surface, it starts sucking air. That breaks the siphon and it stops the, the two inch line that, that's feeding from the pump down there from sucking all the junk out of the bottom of this wetland and blowing it out into your pond. Maybe you've got a check valve down there, maybe you don't. Sooner or later a check valve will fail and when the power goes out, if you don't have this breather, it's gonna leave a mess because it's gonna drain the entire wetland. Guys, that's important. That is just a little thing that you can do to give yourself a little added assurance. And you look smarter because you've actually installed a, a jet, a functional jet somewhere in here in the wetland. So we're gonna do the rest of the plants. I wanna take you down and show you how we prepared yesterday for a quick clean and a temperature adjustment on the water so that the water that we put in matches the temperature of the water that's in the pond. Let's go talk about that. What I wanna share with you guys is what we've going, got going on right down here. So one of our strategies for building a wetland filter is that when you get done with the wetland filter on an existing pond, there's two things that you gotta have. You gotta have water that's the same temperature as the koi pond, because you can't run a bunch of cold, you know, a thousand gallons or whatever of cold hose water into your wetland and then blend that up when it's 100 degrees here in Tennessee. You can't just blend that up with the water in this koi pond. So here, I have set up two tubs of water. We have one tub for cleaning and we have one tub for filling the wetland when we're finished. We set these up early yesterday. We put an aerator on them so there's, there's air blowing into these to get them to the same temperature as what the pond is. That works perfectly. We also, a noteworthy thing to talk about is that when, as soon as we get the wetland backfilled, the aqua blocks in and the stone on top, we fill that puppy full of water up to the stone because if the rainwater runs in underneath it, it will float up out of the bottom and create mass chaos. A lot of work has to be done to get you back to where you were. So we fill that wetland up right off the bat. So we have number one, the water that's in the wetland to clean it. And then we have the ability to take the lid off the snorkel. You guys know what's going on there. We drop our clean out pump down in there and we're gonna recirculate that water through and get all the mud loose, then we're gonna pump it out. Then we're gonna take half of the water that's in this tub right here, we're gonna pump that into the wetland. We're gonna recirculate that. And if it's clean at that point, we've got the other 750 gallons to fill it up. If not, we'll take another 250, pump it in, recirculate it, pump it out, and then we're clean. We've got the other 500 gallons to go in. I'm gonna go get the aquatic plants installed in this thing right now. We have beautiful plants that we've picked out. I'll tell you a little bit about what we're putting in there before we wrap this video up. I want you guys to see how we get it all together. And this way, when we're finished, the wetland is clean. We can plug the pump back in. The koi pond will start in recirculation. We haven't done any damage to temperature fluctuations or anything like that. It's gonna be an easy transition for us to get finished quickly, effectively, take care of the fish, and get the heck out of here. All right guys, this is it. It's wrapped up, the wetland's finished. So let me tell you a little about, about the aquatics that we chose to put in here with the team. Um, what we've used here, we've got some canna. We've got some uh, red stem thalia going on. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Some pickerel rush, some dwarf acorus grass, which will grow into a nice clump. We've got some variegated iris in here. I know iris is a little sketchy, but these guys tend to not be so aggressive as the big uh, flag irises are. We've got some elephant ears going on over here, and we even stuck one water lily in the middle. I hope to get some water hyacinths in here as well. I like to have the whole surface of this grown over with aquatic plants. All right, my peoples, 
this wetland filter saga has unfortunately come to an end. You know what to do. Like the video. If you got any questions, anything I didn't cover that you want to know about, hit me up in the comment section. By all means, subscribe to our channel. I will continue to share all of the confusing numerical basura that I have stuck in my head with all of you people out there. I love you. Have an awesome day. See ya, man.